called him big now because he's big and cheap. He wanted to uh, go swimming. And his dad said, if you can convince him to walk on to go swimming, you can go swimming. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I said, no, boy, you can't go swimming. Because so many times, yeah, so many, he, I said, can you swim a little bit? Well, no, that little bit ain't gonna get it. Amen. Too many folks done drown, and other folks done come back, and you the only one drowning. Amen. Yeah, no, no, no. Did a pre film for a young man. I saw his mother the other day. He out in the water in a lake, and he just jumped off in the water and never come back up. They all come back. He did. Amen. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't let your children, amen, just do anything they want to do. That's what God gave you, the aeola to be them for, to be able to take care of them. Amen. So I know it's not understood a lot of times the decisions that you make for them, but that's what you got to do. I know my children didn't understand some of the decisions that I made, amen, for them, but it was for their good. Because I ain't want to hurt nobody because I ain't want nobody to hurt them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, chapter 22, Genesis. First one. Come on, Evangelist. And it came to pass. And it came to pass of these things. That God did tempt Abraham. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God did what? Tempt Abraham. See? There are tests coming. And we don't necessarily know when they're coming. That's right. Tests are coming. That's right. But we don't know when they're coming. All right. Amen? Amen? Because most of us are just faces in the crowd. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We go about our daily lives and amen. But one thing that's going to set us apart from each other is the faith that we have in God. Yes. All right. Amen. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to set us apart because so many times folks put their trust in chariots and they put their trust in money. They put their trust in everything but the Lord. But we're just all of every people going about our daily tasks and what's going to set us apart is our faith in God. And God did take Tim Abraham and said unto him, Abraham called him one time and he said, Behold, here am I. Mm -hmm. Here I am. And he said, Take now thy son. He said, Now take thy son. Thine only son. Thine only son, Isaac. Whom thou lovest. Whom thou lovest. And get thee into the land. Yeah, and I'm a riot. And offer him, him up there. For a burnt offering. For a burnt offering upon one, of the of one of the mountains. Which I will tell, tell thee. Amen. So, so, I. Faith determines whether we trust and obey the Lord. Amen? Amen. And a lot of great, great faith most people bypass because of what they put their trust in. Right. Amen. The babies are born and the future awaits them. And, 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 and what will they become? We don't necessarily know. But we have our faith that they're going to be what God called them to be. Amen. Everybody may not have exceptional talent or exceptional ability, but all of us can have faith in God. Yeah. Abraham, he was the history of Abraham, he was 75 years old. Mm -hmm. Amen. When God made a promise to him that he was going to be a father of many nations. Yeah. And in order to be a father of many nations, you got to have a child. Mm -hmm. Amen. And Abraham called uh, God called Abraham and make this promise to him and told, tell him. As a matter of fact, he take him outside. He said, I want you to look at the stars in the sky. Look how many stars up there. Can you count them? No, but that's how many your descendants are going to be. Amen. But there was a problem. Satan was barren. He was old. And they didn't have any children. And that's a problem. Abraham needed an offspring. And since Abraham needed an offspring, Genesis 15 and 3 tells us, Abraham had no children. Mm -hmm. But verse 6 of that chapter said, he, uh, of that chapter said, he believed the Lord. Yes. Now I want to know how many of you believe him. Yes. When God calls us to 
tell us to do something, do you believe him? Amen. When God makes a promise to us, do we believe him? Amen. When God tells us to do something and he's going to do this, do we believe him? Or do we look for a way out? Do we look for a, a way that I can see? Amen. But see, you're not going to be able to see, as our Sunday school lesson said this morning, you're not going to be able to see everything that God has for you. you got to trust him. Amen. And some of you know how this feels, how, how Abraham, he was just, you know, 10 years past. Abraham is still waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting for God to fulfill his promise. Amen. But you can't give up on God just because 10 years have passed. You can't give up on God just because 20 years have passed, 25 years have passed. You can't give up on God. Amen. But again, some of you know how this feels, how you've been waiting on God to do something. Let me pause and me, Brother Harry. You've been waiting on God to do something for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. You asked God for something, and it just hadn't happened yet. But do you quit? Do you give up on God? No. You've got to continue to trust him. Because time is in the Lord's hand. Amen. So God took him outside and showed him, this is how your offspring is going to be. And so 10 years have passed, and still they got no children. This test, he has no children. Amen. And 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 so so let me tell you, great faith is not flawless, flawless faith. In other words, when you got faith in God, you're gonna start trying to make stuff happen. All right. So yeah. hey, you give me yeah. thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Appreciate it. Sarah and Abraham didn't have no children. That's right. So Sarah. Got the big idea. Mm -hmm. Like I said, great faith is not flawless faith. Flawless faith. Right. She got the idea and said, okay, I believe God. So, 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 Abraham goes sleep with Hagar. Uh -huh. She tried to fix it. Yeah. Go sleep with Hagar. Maybe I can have an offspring through her. Yeah. But that's not what God wanted. Not. If we know the story, how, 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 when the promise did come, yeah. Then this boy was a problem. Was a problem. Yeah, Come on, niece. This boy was a problem. Yeah. This boy started walking around like he oh, is going to yeah. get to inherit. Yeah. Like he's going to be the one to fulfill the problem. Right. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, God didn't even mention him when he said, Take your only, sure big God, only oh, son that you love. Right. Amen. He wasn't forgetting about Ishmael, but Ishmael wasn't a problem. Yeah. You got to know when the promises of God are given to you. Yes. Yes. Amen. So, 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 uh, uh, 86 years old, mm -hmm. Ishmael is born. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine Abraham said, what is this? Right. Amen. Again, uh, great faith is not flawless faith. Amen. Again, you know the story. So, at the age of 99, and I'm trying to hear it, chapter uh, 17, God reaffirmed the covenant with Abraham. And verse 17 says, Abraham laughed. Yeah. is not the only one that laughed. Abraham laughed because he's 99 years old now. Uh -huh. Amen. Still, amen. God, the promise is not fulfilled. He, she ate it. He's 99 and Sarah old also. Sarah in chapter 18 hears the conversation. And verse 12 says he laughs also. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. But when God promises you something, well, when God makes a covenant for you, yeah. God will bring it to pass. Yes, you don't have to worry about it because God said it. Mm -hmm. I believe it. And that's it. That's it. So they named this boy that was born of Sarah. Mm -hmm. I told you last Saturday, Wednesday night. They named him Isaac. Which means laughter. Because Abraham had laughed. Sarah had laughed. But the angel of the Lord says, and I want you to understand this thing, is there anything too hard for God? That's what the angel asks. Is there anything too hard for God? You may laugh at what God said. You may laugh and feel like it's not possible because you're old, you ain't got no money, whatever the excuse may be. You may laugh when they ask you or tell you that when God tells you to do what he wants you to do. That's right. All things are possible yeah. with yeah. God. Yeah. Nothing is too hard for God. Right. Amen. So, so they named him laughter. So now in chapter 21, Abraham waited 25 years for Isaac. And now he's 100 years old. And God tells him to take your only son, mm -hmm. the one you love, and take him and sacrifice 
like your son. Yeah. Amen. And, and Isaac now being an older boy. And God tests Abraham again. Amen. And see, Abraham didn't know the test is coming. And we don't either. We don't know when the test is going to come. We just got to learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Because I find out that if I trust him, he will what? Provide. Amen. So we got to understand how do we feel about tests and exam, exams when it's time to take that test. Amen. He tells him to take his son, his only son you love. Amen. Finally, Abraham understand what a dad is. What a dad feels like. Like you understand what a dad feels like. And all of a sudden now, you know what a dad feels like. And all of a sudden now, he tells him to sacrifice your son. My Lord. Lord have mercy. Amen. There's no indication of Abraham protesting or wrestling with God when God tells him to sacrifice his son. Amen. And how, has God ever asked you to surrender something to him? Amen. And how do you feel when God tells you to surrender unto him? And see, I want to just give you a little analogy. It's like a little boy that goes to his daddy. Daddy's there right around the corner. And the boss said, Daddy, give me five dollars. Amen. The daddy don't necessarily know what he's doing with it, but he give him the five dollars. And on daddy's day, the boy brings him a gift. Amen. On Daddy's Day, the Daddy receives it with joy. Amen. Because it's Daddy's Day. So what happened? The Daddy bought the gift in the first place. And the boy was only doing bringing something back to him that belonged to him in the first place. So when God asked you to sacrifice something, he already gave it to you. He already gave it to you. And you only bringing some of it back to him. God brought it anyhow. Amen. So, so yes, some tests are, amen, when God tells us to dedicate our children to the Lord, God already gave them to us. Amen. amen. So it takes great faith to do this. Amen. And so the question is, can God be trusted? Yes, can. can God be trusted? Yes, can you trust God with whatever he can give and already give it to you? Amen. God in Galatians 2 and 20 say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but it's who? It's the Christ that lives on the inside of me. So Abraham, and I'm not going to have it all read. I'm going to have it all read, but I'm, uh, we know we took a lot of time doing some other stuff. So Abraham got up early, say early, yeah. early the next morning. Yeah. He didn't hesitate. You know, like we do when, when God tells us to do something, we say, we're gonna, I'm going to pray about it. Because we don't want to do it. But then we don't want to do it. They say, we're gonna, I'm going to pray about it. Amen. So, ain't nothing to pray about. God has already told you what to do. He takes, he loads that donkey. And he takes two servants with him. And he cut the wood and he set out on a three days journey. Amen. What do you think was going on in Abraham's mind when he was on this three days journey? Three days to think about what I'm supposed to do. But I don't know how many thoughts went through his mind, but he kept on going in there. Oh, I got to sacrifice my son. I got to do what God told me to do. Oh, God. The Lord didn't have a clue as to what was going on. I get to that in a minute. Amen. It was going, what do you think was going through his mind? But verse so four saying, see the place in the distance. Abraham tells his two servants, he said, y'all stay here. Yes. Amen. Verse five said, we're going to worship and we're going to come back to you again. <laughs> There's two things I want you to understand that when you make the sacrifices uh -huh. in your life, that's an act of worship yeah. to God. Yes. Sacrifice is an act of worship. And it's like in Romans 12, say, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. You got to learn how to put yourself on the altar. You got to learn how to surrender everything to him. Yes. And then the second thing I want you to know is that he had confidence. Yes, that's right. Oh, Lord, that's right. He had confidence. He had confidence that if I go and do what God tells me to do, that I'm going, God has got the ability right. to raise him up, yeah. and I'm going to come back to you again. Yeah. I'm going 
we could have some great